There are a few things in life that are more annoying to me than a loose tool head on a handle. Today I'll show you how to repair this without replacing the handle. Well, this is much better. So we can see if we, if we try to fit this head on here, it's actually still very tight. It's too, t too tight for me without uh, beating on it. I can't, I can't get it on. So that tells me that uh, we've got a lot to work with here. This, is, this should be a viable handle. So we'll take our rasp and start working the shoulders back. We want to we wanna put a nice, we don't want that abrupt edge. We don't want this just bumping into the bottom of that. That's just going to get loose again. We want to drive that splitting mall head up on that wedge. We want a nice tight, tight wedge all the way around it. We'll cut out the rough stuff with a really, this really coarse file rasp. Since this handle is pretty dry and getting a little long in the tooth, I'm going to put a little chamfer on the edge of this before I try to feed it back in there because I run the risk of, it is so tight on the eye that I run the risk of, uh, of cracking it. So this will uh, just give us a little insurance. You can see it's flared out right there. So this is actually going to be sticking out of the handle now that we're going to drop it down lower. So it's not going to hurt a thing. Let's see if we can't uh, fit this head on here. Okay. Well, this is much better, much better. See, remember when we uh, disassembled this, this was flush, this, this top section right here. And look now that we've got a good, oh, probably over a half inch sticking out of there. It means we've seated that way down further on that shoulder, but still there's, a, there's plenty there. We even, if we ever needed to redo this a third time, um, we could still have enough to drop that down. And this will go even further once we set it. So. What I'll do is, with these, you always want to strike them from the bottom. It's okay to, to, to pound these down when you're first starting them, but uh, to sit, seat them properly, we'll want to hit it on the handle. Now, if you guys are doing axes that have uh, elaborate fawn's foots on there, or fawn foots, fawn's foots that come to a point, you know, be careful in hitting on those. This is pretty simple because it's flat on the bottom, but the, if you do have that elaborate feel, you're not going to be able to whack it on there, hit it like that without running the risk of breaking it. So if you're making your own handles, be sure that you seat your head before you finish that. Then you can finish the fawn's foot and do it the way you like it. So this is coming down real nice here. If you look here, you can see that we've even got more. We're probably at three quarters of an inch now. You see where we're uh, starting to peel up all that wood there. That means it's, it's seating down there nice. It's getting nice and tight on that. And we'll continue to work that down there until we get no more movement. Okay, so that is driven hard on there. And you can see there, now we're ready. We're gonna put a big old fat wedge in there and really put the, put the Swede to it. All right, it's ax wedge in time. So here's a little wedge that I made out of a piece of hickory. Um, splitting mall, pretty, pretty wide one there because it's pretty, we got a pretty good gap here. So what I've been doing, and I've had good luck with this, is, is really fulfilling this up with linseed oil. Get that in there till it really permeates. You know, this is the this is really the only way to do this. You know, if, if you t you'll talk to lots of guys. You know, I'm going to dip this in linseed oil too here. You talk to a lot of guys, they'll tell you, "Oh, just stick it in a bucket of water." Well, you don't need to be rude and tell them that they don't know what they're talking about, but store up that knowledge. You'll just learn from that person because that will tell you what. I will tell you, you're talking to someone that doesn't know anything about hanging axe heads. Because what that does, 
as it swells up the wood, it will make it tight, no doubt, drop your axe in a bucket of water, but when it dries out, it'll be much looser and much worse than before. It actually squishes the wood and compresses it. Linseed oil does the same thing, but the linseed oil doesn't leave. It stays there and keeps it swelled up. That's why you want to reapply it. Reapply it through the top there, and then you won't have any problems. So let's go ahead. And when, and when I do my wedges, I make them tight, even to the outside. I make them a little bit wider, just a hair wider than the handle itself. So it really squishes, and I cut them at a little bit of a taper. They're actually, it actually goes out re, just a tiny bit on the outside there. All right, warning, important detail. When you're pounding these wedges, if you pound on these wedges with your hammer, you're gonna split. You're gonna split it into a couple pieces. You don't want that. You wanna pound on a piece of wood that is as least as wide as the wedge itself. Right there. And you don't wanna go flat because there's more give in flat when you hit the flat part. You wanna hit on the end of it, on the end grain. That's what gives you the most force. So I'll put that on there and with really deliberate strikes, I'm gonna knock that down there. Now I may have a problem here. I may have bottomed out my wedge. Means I went to the bottom of the kerf because I didn't extend the kerf on that, hoping I could get away with it. Yep, I can feel it. So what I'll do is I'll knock this out of here. Slow things down here a minute before someone loses an eye. So I'll knock this out of here. And it's no problem, it's plenty deep enough. I'm gonna take and I'm gonna cut some of this off. I'm gonna cut uh, about half of that off and I'll get my really get the fat part of the wedge going in there. I so badly wanted to get this in one take. I do go on and on and on, but there's just, there's so much information I wanna share. So uh, here we go. Part, uh, part three, <laughs> part three. Part three is right over there and we'll finish it up. And man, it turned out really nice. Granddad would be proud. So don't forget to click the thumbs up and head on over. We'll, uh, we'll see you there.